The Esperance Girls Academy started in 2017. It started after the school and the admin team identified that there was a bit of a gap for support for Aboriginal girls. So the school had the CONTAF program at the time and they'd been ongoing for about 10 years. Um, and we're seeing successes and seeing the outcomes that the CONTAF program was providing for the boys. Um, but there was always that gap for the girls. The Esperance Girls Academy is for Aboriginal girls, so any girl enrolled at the school is invited in at the start of every year. The statistics of Aboriginal girls graduating and then rolling into job opportunities or careers is significantly low. For the girls to be able to transition into careers, the better option for them is to graduate. What the Girls Academy program does is supports the girls academically to complete the things required for graduation. So we've brought some of our girls out for a cultural camp in partnership with Dalyarak and the Rangers and Esperance Community Arts. We want them to be connected to their culture, connected to country. When the girls feel connected and confident with themselves and who they are and where they're from, they are much more confident to tackle the barriers within school because it's not easy for any team, but for our girls, sometimes there's extra barriers that we work with them through. <coughs> When they're a part of knowing about their culture and proud of their local Esperance culture, you see the girls walk with their heads up and shoulders back. Is they going to bite you? Ah! Hope not. Yeah, I've been catching them since I was a baby. With a new word, working out there. He's saying yawn. <laughs> yawn. The girls see our role models, so when they're seeing our rangers and see our elders standing up and talking to them, strong Aboriginal women, when they can see it, they can believe it. So it's just good for them to have a break and just be around elders and loving their culture and learning about it. The location we decided to go with for this cultural camp is Munglanup. We have a river that goes into an estuary that at times opens up the breakwater to the ocean. Um, so it's a bit of connection there with freshwater and saltwater. The different types of Aboriginal culture the girls will be experiencing it will be food, it'll be dance, it'll be language. The girls will be learning a lot about their local Wujari language. And we're very lucky to have an elder Annie Dab and her daughter Wanika Close help with that. Both ladies have lots of knowledge. This is where a lot of our ancestors sat around here, camped along the river. And they fished for broom as well. What's that one? Mm. Eagle. Two of them. You know what the eagle's called in your yeah. language? Not you, Taya. Anybody else? Wallach? Yeah. Wallach. That's called the Wallach. The other elders and rangers that have come are so knowledgeable with bush tucker plants, just knowing the English word for them and then also the Noongar words. For this is drop born. It's good body scrub. You can feel it really. Exfoliating? Yeah. <laughs> the girls want to have a smell of it? Yeah. The Yunga name for it is your. It's called Bibarak, guys. So that's that okay, case of your cyclops, Bibarak. But that seeds from that tree there, we're going to put some in our dam for two tomorrow. Um, crush it up in here and once you feel it getting really, really sticky, then you add a little bit of water, rub them together and it'll come out soaky. You've got to do it tight. Rub, 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 rub. That one's more soapy up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So girls, if you want to know the Nyunga name for this tree here, yeah. there's a suburb in Perth that's named after it. That's the bauga tree. Um, got to call it the grass tree or bauga tree. We also have at this spot beautiful array of different types of bush tucker plants and medicine plants. See that fern over there? That's the um, Zambia palm. That's a bush tucker for the Aboriginal people. So wherever you see one there growing, that's when you know they sat down there and had a feed. But with the Zambia, you gotta treat it. You can't eat it straight off the plant because it's poison. The elders will be providing the girls with some dream time stories. This river here and some of the other rivers you see is we've got a dream time story of the mermaid. And we call her Manbikara. The mermaid created a lot of our waterways. Isn't that cool? We have a mermaid here. And our mermaid, she's a very pretty mermaid. She's very colourful, like the rainbow colours. I'm going to tell you girls, it's a dream time story and it's my grandfather's story. Who often looks at the Milky Way? And who can tell me what's in the Milky Way? Have you heard your own dream time stories about the Milky Way? About the emu that's up there? Well this story is about that old man emu up there. And Esperance, we call him Waichma. Here we've got the story about the Willy Wagtail. And do you know what his name is called in Nyunga? Chiri Chiri, that's it. One time in the knitting, and the knitting is the dream time, way back in the knitting, there was a assembly. They all called the birds and animals around to come and sit around a big fire like we are sitting around now. And they were gonna have a big meeting, talk about some problems, talk about what's happening. All the birds flew in. and they was all sitting around the fire and they waiting because the old man Emu, he called the meeting. He's sitting there waiting for everyone to sit down quietly and all take their places, looking at them all like this here and making sure that everybody's here. And as he was talking to them, this little willy wagtail, the chitty chitty, he was sitting down there and he was looking at him and looking around at the other birds and he had a mischievous look on his face. We call him, he's, he's a devil bird. He's one of these troublemaker birds. He brings bad news to us. That's why Aboriginal people, we don't like looking at the chitty chitty when he come dancing in front of us with his little tail. So he's sitting there, listening to the emu talking away, and then next minute he started copying him, what he was saying, mimic him. And you know how they're calling? Dance around, they hop and they make that little chirping noise. Oh, he was doing that, copying this old man emu. Old man emu sitting there ignoring him and still talking. And so this little chitty chitty, he got dancing, got his little, doing his little twerk in there. <laughs> and it started to annoy the old emu. So I said, right, I will fix you. So he got up and he rushed that chitty chitty and you know chitty chitty, they fast, eh? He jumped to the side flying around in front of all the other little birds, in and out of them. And the old man, him, he big with his big lanky legs, eh? And he was trying to kick at that little bird, but he, that little bird, he was too fast. And made that emu wild. The old man, him, he ran again, went to kick him. And when he went to kick him, he fell. And you know what he fell into? He fell into the fire. And all the embers, started going up. See how these embers going up? 
and he went way up into the sky. And that's where you see him today. When you look at the Milky Way next time, you look in the dark area, you see his head up one end, and then his body comes down into the other end. And that's where he stays today up there. So girls, next time you see the little chitty chitty being sneaky and cheeky and being smart, just think of that story and look up into the sky and you will see the old Waichma. And so that's what we love to do, is create those opportunities for our girls to know anything's achievable. Love your culture, be proud of who you are, so that you can take on the challenges in the world. The girls will be going out to collect bushtucker foods also for them to try off the lands. When we go out on camp we try to make sure our girls have first time experiences so there will be some things that some of these girls haven't ever experienced before so it's important that they all get that opportunity and they all get a chance to understand and learn about their culture to be proud. Oh it's a big one. Okay. Mm. No. And tickle him, tickle him, and we'll watch the other end to see if he comes out. Just don't poke him too hard, just tickle him, yep, just... Oh, you want to eat it? No. Get it. I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat it? All of it, I just thought it was yummy. Video it. Yum. <laughs> we went out. <laughs> There's a little one oh, here. there he is, he's coming. Anyway, um... okay. Yeah, you want to go halves? Okay. Yummy. Oh, that actually tastes Tastes nice? Yeah. Yeah. What does it taste like? <laughs> nice? <laughs> yeah. When it's cooked, it tastes it's like scrambled eggs. It tastes yeah. like... When it's cooked, it tastes like butter. Yeah. yeah. But, um, Are you going to cook him up? Yeah, because yeah, we're going to have him cooked. Because I want to taste it cooked too. Do you reckon Mr Duffy will eat one tonight? Oh. Yeah. 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 Some of their families might not have all the culture, so if we can provide that opportunity with our local elders, with our local rangers from Dalyurak, the girls just love it. They embrace any cultural um, activities we do or any cultural experience they can get. Different coloured greens all the way to the white. I feel with our past histories in Australia, and the things that have happened to our older generations, a lot of things have been yeah, a little bit lost on the way. We don't have strong language, and we don't have strong cultural connections in modern society now. It looks like orange juice. <laughs> For our girls to be able to go back to some of the traditions that our ancestors had, it's quite powerful and spiritual and it brings about a peace for our young girls. Gentle, gentle, gentle. There's about eight normal eggs in there. Yeah. I have boiled them for a bit. Um, in the pot today, I slowly start to open. I want to open um, needles, usually the best thing to sort of scoop them out, get them out. Put them a bit off and just um, put them in some lemon. Oh, vinegar and salt. With Aboriginal young people, they suffer a lot of mental health. When we have girls who aren't doing well, after taking them on excursions or camps on country, you can actually see pretty much immediately how it affects them and how it helps these girls. 
to just be able to deal with another day of whatever's coming. We're cooking the biggest one for Mr. Duffy. They're going to give one to Mr. Mr. Duffy. He gets the biggest one. And he has to eat it. And me to go. Oh, Did you cook them? Yeah. Any good or not? Hey, it's early this time. You're right, like. Yeah. It's something. <laughs> A lot of people don't understand our culture properly. There's lots of learning to be done still and I believe our next generation are the kids who are going to push that and I'm excited to see, especially in Esperance, how that will evolve and happen especially with programs and organisations like the WRAC Rangers, going out and teaching other kids about our culture and for other kids to be proud of the culture. Katsa, konnich, konnich, jina. Katsa, konnich, konnich, jina. Mia, do, ba, moya. Jinang Jinang Nach Nunduk. Jinang Jinang Nach Nunduk. Jinang Jinang Nach Nunduk. Jinang Jinang Nach Nunduk. Yira Yirang Kokanam. Anyone finding any word hard? Which word is the hardest for you? And I hope that the girls are proud to share their culture because I think it's important our young people have that shared learning experiences from both, um, both different types of worlds, different perspectives, because that's how we're gonna grow as a country together with our girls knowing who they are, where they're from and share their experiences as well. Listening.